sa implementasyon ng bagong system ng Tawanihan ng Rentas Invernas na Internal Revenue Integrated System o IRIS, particular sa ating registration, may mga impormasyon o detalye na kailangan mo fill up sa ating DIR Form 1901 na kailangan kailangan ng ating registration section upang magpatuloy o maging successful ang registration sa system. Kadalasan may mga hindi na fill up ng maayos o hindi kompleto sa ating DIR Form 1901 na nagsasanti ng mabagal na pag-usad ng pila sa ating registration. Ang video lecture nito ay naglalayo na bigyan ang ating mga taxpayers ng Dubai sa pag-fill up ng ating DIR Form 1901. Mga pangunahing punto na matutunan sa video lecture nito ay ang mga sumusunod. Una, lamin natin ang primary purpose ng DIR Form 1901. Pangalawa, sino-sino ba ang mga taong kailangan gumamit o mag-file ng form na ito? Panghuli, ay ang mga steps o hakbang sa pag-fill up ng naturang form. Ang una at pangalawang punto ay masasagot o makikita natin sa mismong title and description ng DIR Form 1901 na nakadisplay sa ating DIR website. Description This form is to be accomplished by self-employed and mixed-income individuals, estates, or trusts doing or just starting a business or opening a new branch for registration to be filed with the RDO having jurisdiction over the head office or branch office. Ang Form 1901 ay ginagamit upang maregistro, una, ang self-employed individuals. Makikita natin sa Section 2N RR 8-2018 ang definition ng self-employed individuals. Keyword for self-employed na kailangan tandaan ay He or she controls who he or she works for and how the work is done and when it is done. Sa definition ng self-employed, pumapasok ang mga business owners o kaya nagpapractice ng profession tulad ng abogado, doktor, engineers, architect, or accountants. O kaya naman ay online freelancers tulad ng mga virtual assistants, online bookkeepers, online tutors, software developers, multimedia artists, mga bloggers, ang lahat ng mga iyon, they belong to the self-employed group. Susunod, pinagamit ang 1901 to register mixed income individuals. Nasa section 2J RR8-2018 ang definition ng mixed income individual. Halimbawa, isa kang empleyado na sinasakuran and at the same time, Tumikita ka or sumasideline ka as a freelancer. Kailangan mong i-register ang iyong site and business or racket kung ikaw ay professional using 1901. Third, ay estates. Kung ang isang taxpayer ay namayapa at ang kanyang ari-arian ay maipamamana sa mga katapagmana, ang team na gagamitin ay hindi yung team noong nabubuhay siya. Bagus, matibigyan siya ng panibagong team. I mean, ang team ng estate. Panghuli, nagagamit ng 1901 ay ang mga unang dalawang nabanggit, self-employed, and mixed income earners na may dati ng business at mag-open ng bagong branch. Ngayon, pag-aralan natin ang tamang pag-fill up ng DIR Form 1901. Mag-download natin ang form na ito sa ating DIR website na naka-PDF. Ito ang mga detalyang kailangan o siguruhin mapunan. Sa Part 1, Taxpayer Information, i-discuss natin isa-isa ang mga kailangang ma-fill up na items. Sa topmost right ng 1901, makikita ang team to be issued field, which obviously dito sinasulat ng bagong team na ini-issue sa iyo. So, hindi mo i-fill up yung field na yan. First item na fill upon mo, if meron ka, is item number 1, which is the PSN or Phyllis's number. 
But this item is not required kasi hindi pa naman may issue alang lahat ng Pilipino ng PSN. Maybe sooner, uh, gagawin itong required. But right now, yung system hindi naman mandatory field ang PSN. Pero kung meron ka na, might as well fill it up para mas okay. Item 2 is yung registering office. So, if you start up yung business nyo, syempre, sa head office ang ipipik. If mag add ng branch, obviously, the branch. Quick lesson lang kung saan mag-register, halimbawa ang online freelancer or home-based professional ka. Saan ka mag-register? Of course, sa so RDO having jurisdiction where you conduct your business, which is sa bahay or yung residence mo. So, if you're a vlogger or an online freelancer at nakatira ka sa Kalaukan, dito ka sa RDO 27 Kalaukan mag-register. Pero take note, iba ang practice kapag job order professional ka. Say, for instance, you are rendering your service as a job order contractor halimbawa sa isang government office located sa Makati. But you are from Kalaukan o dito ka nakatira, where do you register? Dito ka pa rin sa Kalaukan mag-register since, in effect, dito yung head office mo. So moving on, item 4, taxpayer identification number. Take note, you fill this up if you have an existing teen. Halimbawa, mag open ka ng branch at of course may dati ka ng teen and need mo i-fill up yon sa item 4. Another example is kung empleyado ka na nagsa sideline as a freelancer na mag-register ng yung sideline business. Another is kung individual taxpayer ka na naisuhan na ng TIN before like ONET and EO98 individuals na magre-register ng kanilang business o bilang mga freelancers or job orders. Next item 6, taxpayer type. So, i-discuss natin yung mga usual na nagre-register sa atin and what to choose depending on your circumstance. So, if you're a business owner, like sa trading or my courier or transport service ka, you will choose option single prop. If you are a practicing professional like a doctor or lawyer or engineer and you have with you your PRC license, dito ka sa professional license, PRC or IPP. Otherwise, kung freelancer ka like a software developer, online tutor, job order, home-based professional, o mga vloggers. Dito kayo sa professional in general. What if isa kang lawyer and at the same time, you own a business? You choose professional and single prop. If for instance naman, you are currently working as an employee and you decided to run a business under your name, you take this mixed income earner compensation earner and single proprietor. Another example, say if you're an accountant currently employed by a private firm and you are allowed to practice your profession on the side, you choose mixed income earner compensation income earner and professional. Or kung, sub or kung sobrang lupit mo na isa kang CPA lawyer na currently employed as a director and then you own a business and nagpa-practice ka pa ng profession mo as a CPA lawyer all at the same time, you choose mixed income earner compensation, single prop, and professional. Next item, 7. Taxpayer full name. It's important to remember na dapat full name. Kung may suffix ka like senior or junior or the third, you have to fill it in. Next item, 8. Gender. Currently, hindi pa ganun ka-gender sensitive ang ating BIR forms since dalawang gender pa lang ang pwedeng pagpilian. Item 9, civil status. Item 10, date of birth. And item 11, place of birth are all self-explanatory. Next item, item 12, mother's maiden name. Isa ito sa mga commonly skipped fields pero importanteng-importanteng mafila pa nito. 
Remember, full name ito ng mother mo noong siya ay dalaga. Item 13, father's full name. Item 14, citizenship. Item 16, local residence address are all self-explanatory. Item 17, business address. Important thing to be considered in this item is dapat laging naka-include ang barangay number and zip code dito sa kalaukan. If hindi mo alam yung barangay number, you can always find the answer to your question on Google o internet. Another important item is line item 22, preferred contact type. Fill in at least two contact details, primarily landline or yung cell phone, and email address. Next, item 23, option to avail of the 8% preferential rate. The discussion for this line item will be posted as a separate video. Since medyo maraming factors na kailangang tandaan and makonsider dito. Pero in general, if you are a vatable person or a person subject to other percentage taxes under Title 5 of the tax code, you don't have the option to avail of this preferential rate since this is only available to non-VAT taxpayers earning purely from self-employment in practice of profession or kung mixed income earner ka yung income mo lang from self-employment ang pwede sa 8% and yung compensation income mo will be subjected sa graduated rates so ayun ang dami ko nang nasabi diba? pero still that may appear to be convoluted or complex lalo na sa mga first time taxpayers hearing this that's why I suggest you to follow our Facebook page for more tax videos, particularly on this subject. Okay, moving on sa part 2, spouse information. If may jowa ka, as in legal na kasal, importanteng mailagay ang pangalan ng spouse mo. If may tin siya, of course, you have to fill it in. Otherwise, you can skip the tin field. So part 3, Authorized representative, if applicable. If the taxpayer is not the one registering, you have to fill this field. Take note, kung sino yung nakalagay sa special power of attorney or SPA that the taxpayer will be furnishing, iyon din dapat ang naka-input sa field na ito. Ang mga importanteng dapat mafilapan ay ang mga sumusunod at dapat walang may skip. Item 29, full name of authorized representative. Item 32, residence of representative. Item 33, preferred contact type of representative. Now, sa part 4, business information, ang importanteng ma-fill up is yung item 35, which is trade or business name. This is basically kung ano yung nakalagay sa DTI certificate mo. Next one is regulatory body. Of course, kung hawak mo na yung DTI certificate mo, iyon na yun. Isulat mo dito is DTI. Business registration number and business registration date is of course yung nasa details ng certificate na nilagay mo sa regulatory body. So in case somebody is wondering, paano kung mayor's permit ang ilalagay as regulatory body? Of course, ang ilalagay mo dito sa registration number at registration date is yung details na makikita mo from your mayor's permit. Also, take note of RMO 19-2018. Makikita sa Annex A1 ang checklist of documentary requirements. Hindi na required ang mayor's permit as a separate mandatory requirement sa pag-register ng business. Not like before. Take note of the word OR. So if may DTI ka, that will suffice. Now, another important field na kailangang mafilapan is yung line of business, which is dapat clear so as to be easily recognized kung saan industry ka nabibilang. This will be the basis kasi kung saan industry ka matatag 
dito sa PSIC code, PSIC. By the way, PSIC stands for Philippine Standard Industrial Classification. Sa so part 5, tax type, hindi mo fill up pa nito since ang registration officer ang mag-fill up ng fields na ito. So part 7 and part 8, you only have to fill this up if it is applicable to you. That is kung isa kang mixed income earner. Ang importante yung ma-fill up sa part na ito ay yung employer name and team. And after ma-fill up, of course, do not forget your signature over printed name. So that's it. We hope this video lecture has covered enough para sa ating mga value taxpayers. And we hope that after viewing this video, uh, you may be equipped with the knowledge on how to fill up ng maayos ang ating DIR form 1901.